how did you come together with this event? Uh, well, we were actually, I was, uh, I saw on the news about the cochlear implants and uh, I thought, what a beautiful thing. And I Googled it to see, you know, if people, because it's, the cochlear implants are made specifically for speech and being able to hear language and, and be able to speak and hear speech. And I wondered, you know, can they hear music? Can they play music? And it turns out they can. And this whole event is called I Can Hear the Music. Yeah, so we found that uh, the charity, um, Voice for Deaf Kids, also known as Voice for Hearing Impaired Children, they um, have you know some people that they know who are kids who take music lessons who are you know pronounced deaf and use cochlear implants bilateral cochlear implants and I, we thought it would be a really great event for us to get involved in we were looking for something to do it's like what can we do for people we wanted to do something you know voluntary and for charity and this is just perfect right now we have performing students from a sharp school of music who are volunteering their time and uh, they practice very hard and prepared for this event to uh, help bring so we have three uh, hearing impaired kids who are going to be performing we have uh, Kieford who's eight years old he's going to be performing on the violin and we have Neha who's going to play piano and we have Lauren who's also going to play piano well, that, that basically would lead me to my question about what would be your legacy or necessarily the ethics that you might teach uh, some of your students. Obviously, if you are dedicated to also helping those who, who do have difficulties, um, I think that's a strong ethical stance. Yeah, and I'm really happy with the turnout we've had here. We got a really strong support from the students. They were all very happy to be here and to sell tickets to their friends and bring their parents. And we even got donations, uh, a lot of donations for the charity and, uh, you know, donations for the silent auction. And, yeah, it's been really good. The kids are great. We, uh, we try to mentor them, you know, so that, uh, you know, the teachers at the school, they all have strong characters and, and good moral values and they're just really great people who, you know, love music and love to teach music and so we like to think that we're influencing them in a positive way. Dr. Bird, it's a pleasure to meet you. And I'd just like to ask you right off the bat, could you please explain briefly what is The Boomerang Effect? Well, The Boomerang Effect is a book that I've written. It's the concept that when we have problems, they can be recycled and they repeat themselves. And how do we manage those challenges and difficulties? So that's what the book is about, how to overcome the things that repeat themselves in our lives. And um, how, how long have you um, been writing in general? Well, I'm a psychotherapist, so the book comes from the work that I do. I created this, a form of therapy called self-imaging therapy. It's transformational from the inside out. And so I, it gives me a unique perspective. And the book is written based on my work with my clients. And I develop concepts from that. And, it, and it's a user-friendly way so people can understand more deeply what goes on inside of them and how they can transform and change things Thank that you. Even though they I am not a musician, I right so hence I get it. but my work itself is in a transformation it is going it's about images and metaphors and going inside yourself so it, it is about bringing out that creative and developing parts of yourself that have been maybe lost or damaged so it, it carries just when you work in my line of work ethics are just have to be an integral part in the whole process but just just to talk a little bit more about the cochlear implants just so that just to advertise or understand what what this what we're raising funds for is that OHIP covers the cochlear plants but the families then are responsible for the subsequent cost which is five thousand dollars a year for rehabilitation so we're raising funds and uh, May is deaf and hearing month in Canada, but there's very little awareness about it at all. Like there's nothing in the news. We tried to raise awareness. It's very difficult for people to actually be interested, even though about three million Canadians are deaf or hard of hearing. What do you want to be your legacy, your lasting legacy? Well, because it, my work is such a passion for me, that would be my first legacy in that I left a mark in terms of helping people understand how they could better themselves and better their lives. And so anything that 
can contribute to raising that awareness is very much a part of what I would like to leave back.